grow up and as most of you know we homeschool I have a rising well first grader and a fourth grader we've already started our school year for the 2016-2017 year we basically homeschool year-round uh, we did take our longest break so far which has been three weeks because we wanted to kind of regroup and get things done that's been kind of neglected throughout the school year so this uh, three weeks has been wonderful but uh, before that we have been doing a few things and so one of the questions is what curriculum are you using and there are so many curriculums out there we all have things that we love and we're just okay about and you know that's part of it we we've all made into curriculum that we don't like and it's not that it's a bad curriculum it just may not be a great fit for our family or our specific child um, both of my boys have different learning styles so I know that a lot of the curriculum I'm not gonna be able to double use um, even though I would love to so here is a look at what we're doing this year and I'm gonna start out with our math so this year we have decided to do the teaching textbooks math um, my fourth grader struggles with math he's had a hard time and we switched our math uh, curriculum uh, three times last year and we ended up with Matthew C. Matthew C is a wonderful program. It helped him. He needed it. He was having a very hard time with his multiplication and the way that it's set up is they do multiplication the entire year and so it's wonderful. However, in North Carolina we are required to take the integrated testing and that's the only reason we didn't choose the Matthew C this year because it focused only on the multiplication and we had division and things like that that we hadn't studied yet this year so it kind of hurt us in a way so um, luckily I got the EOGs in enough time to kind of tutor him a little bit so he was able to kind of understand it before we started our EOGs thank goodness we do get it like two weeks in advance so then I knew what was going to be on it so we started talking about we kind of skipped ahead and, and did on our own to kind of show him how to do what he didn't know how to do before his test so you know it was still a struggle for his test but that's the only reason we're not using Matthew C this year is because we were afraid with it going into fourth grade that it would probably study uh, division and we needed more than just division so um, we were going with the teaching textbooks this year we've done it for a few weeks now love it he loves it there's no tears there's no crying there's no frustration so for this this is wonderful so looking forward to using that this year uh, spelling now he struggles with spelling too he's a wonderful reader but for some reason spelling just gets him every time and so this year we are doing the soaring with spelling level four uh, we have done a couple of weeks into this and it's wonderful uh, so far so good is what I have to say about that you also get your answer key so you the teacher and then the student book so you get that which is great and um, this year we're gonna try something new as far as grammar goes last year uh, we've used Memoria Press and I adore Memoria Press um, but this year we thought we would try something different just to kind of see if you'd like it and um, you know how it is when you homeschool you want to try different curriculum and I've heard wonderful things about this so we got this uh, easy grammar grade four we've done this for about four weeks now so far so good we like it looking forward to the rest of the year hopefully to use this uh, particular book for that so there's that now writing I love apologia it is no surprise I love apologia stuff and so we decided to do the writers and resident. I know it's a hefty book, isn't it? It's like, ugh. We decided to do the writers and residents. We did four weeks of this, um, four to six weeks, I can't remember, um, this past year for third grade. Now, this book is actually geared for fourth grade up, but we had done a few other writing curriculums that really got my fourth grader ready for this. And before we had done the other curriculums, and I can direct you to those that we used that actually helped him feel more confident in his writing before we started this and I will tell you the kid who used to cry and hate to write he would cry right in one sentence he loves writers in residence he has loved this program so this I just cannot say enough wonderful things about it love 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 it you can go to our uh, website and I actually have a review on this because I mean it's wonderful wonderful so there's that and as they do it they have a little their writing so he has started this as well with his writings so there's that science once again apology for the win for me um, we're doing the botany now we had tried the botany um, in second grade 
and it was a lot for him. I'm not going to lie. We, we tried it, the Latin words, the terminology, it was a little much for a second grader, so we put it up. I, I, being that he's going to the fourth grade, I laid it out, the apology that we have not done yet, and said, okay, what do you want to do? And he wanted to go back to this botany. And I am thrilled. He loves gardening. He loves plants. He loves all this stuff. So I'm really excited about this. So we're doing the botany. And then I've got him the notebook and journal as well. So we're really looking forward to this this year. Um, geography. I didn't want something that was really in depth. I didn't want to spend, you know, hours doing geography. Um, so the perfect thing for us was the Evan Ward geography practice. It's simplicity, it's great, you don't spend a lot of time in it a day, it's like one sheet a day, uh, we look forward to it, I do it with him, I'm very hands on, so, and I know I need to start teaching him to do some on his own because it's going to come back and bite me, I'm sure, with having two that are, you know, my first graders eventually, so I'm probably spending hours if I don't. But I sat down and do all this with him. Could it be done as a stand by himself? Yes, he could do it by himself. Um, but I'm usually there to answer his questions, and then we get more in depth with our talk. I'm also using a version of this for my first grader as well. Um, so history, I forgot history. We are using the story of the world, modern history, um, for our fourth grade year. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Last year we studied. American his early American history and love it. I love studying early American history. So we are going to do the story of the world. Um, I am going to be throwing in some North Carolina history since we live in North Carolina, and there is a chance that maybe or maybe not we might be addressing it at the end of the year. I know in North Carolina it is part of the the lineup that in fourth grade they do study some North Carolina history. So we are going to be doing that as well. But this is the book we have done this. Um, Maybe three weeks, loving it so far, the activities and things like that. But it's what I did. We also have the book that goes with it. Well, the book is thick, and the book comes with the teacher and the student guide. So it's what I've done is I have broken it in half and put it in folders. This is his book. This has got his maps, his uh, timeline, his questions. You know, if we do certain activities, the book is read. In addition to the, that, okay, we have that in his folder. And then we have my folder. And my folder has got the questions, the activities, the, you know, things like that to do. So there's that. So now we're coming to the electives. I know it's it's optional. And this is the first year that we've really done a set book electives. And I'm looking forward to it um, with both boys. It's gonna, I'm going to be combining these with both boys. First off, I've got to tell you about the Memoria Press. Once again, I, I will say I love Memoria Press stuff. They're Greek mythology. Now... With that, it's for grades three and up. My first grader is going to be doing this as well, only because he loves Greek mythology. We did this for about a month this past year to kind of get a feel for it because we did have the opportunity to review it, and it's wonderful. And my first grader loves it. My fourth grader loves it, and without a doubt, we're doing it. Now, we're going to do it one day a week, maybe two. And the cool thing is, is you can get this book. So we're going to do it very slow, very relaxed. But you can get this as a one-year and a two-year. At the time, you can get a one-year and a two-year plan for uh, the layout schedule. And I got a one-year, but I think I'm going to play around with it and make it more of a two-year. because I don't Only because I'm doing it with my first grader as well. You get the book with it, which is wonderful, full color. You get your student guide and your teacher guide. And you get the cards so you can go back and, and go over the cards with them as well. Love this program. It's wonderful. Like I said, grades three and up. I'm doing it for my first grader. Now, obviously, my first grader is going to be answering the questions or doing the student book. He's too little. But he can answer the questions. I can ask him questions of things that we've learned. And he is learning as we go. So I'm using that. And this year, maybe it's because I'm crazy. No, no, but we're learning the recorder. Now, this sounded like a good idea until I got with him. I'm learning to play the recorder at the same time. Still, though, they are loving it. Um, first grader kind of gets kind of frustrated. Fourth grader has taken off with it where he's learning to read the notes. He's learning all of this. So we do this formally once a week. Um, he pulls out his recorder daily, and he'll play the songs that we've learned or the new songs. So we like doing that as well. So there's that. Um, I got this off of Amazon, and it came with two. Well, no, I got two recorders as well, so we do have that. 
art. We've never done a formal art. This is the first year we've done a formal art and we've done arts and crafts in the past every week or so. We'll do paintings or things like that. This is the first year we've done arts and crafts. So we are doing the artistic pursuits with that. Now this is recommended for grades K through three, but I am going to be using it with my fourth grader because like I said, we've not done any formal stuff and I just really love the book. So it's going to be perfect for both of the boys to do that. So there's that. And last but definitely not least, and I think I've got everything except the writing, and I haven't ordered the writing yet. I know what I'm going to use, and um, I just have to get it in. So I have not done that. He's going to be starting to learn the cursive, so that's coming. But music appreciation. I took mu piano for 12 years. I adore the piano. I adore classical music. And that's what I learned was the classical music and these can put the classical composers and so in comes music appreciation I'm using this with both the boys and um, the workbook is designed for one child so you can buy additional workbooks uh, but with my it's a little I think it's a little advanced for my first grader because he's not gonna be able to do a lot of the book stuff but he um, he does listen and I do verbally ask him questions so we'll probably be going this again when he gets older but love this so along with this music appreciation you do get the CDs and there's also a DVD in there a CD that you can um, make notebooks and stuff with so you do have that as well so there's that and then you get these awesome books so these are the books you get now this is Schubert is the only hardcover so you do get the Schubert book um, you get Hayden and Handel, Beethoven, and last but not least, Mozart. So that is it. That is our fourth grade year this year, and we are going to be super excited for it. It's, I know it looks like a lot. This is the first year we've had stacks of books. But we are pretty excited about it, and we are looking forward to tackling it. Um, I will probably get back with you guys or list on our website the books that we're going to do because I always line up like our books that we're going to do as read-alouds and books that for him to read. So I kind of like to have those ahead of time so he can kind of go to the shelf and pull out what he wants to read, you know, and things of that nature. I've not done that yet. I'm still tossing up the read-alouds because they are time-consuming. So I'm kind of playing around with what I want to do that I can combine it for both the, my first and fourth grader. So to give you a look inside the uh, Math 4 teaching textbooks, and like I said, we've not had to use the book yet this year. We probably will be pulling it out as they get into, you know, as he gets more in-depth. But just to kind of give you a look. This is the book, so, you know, it's user-friendly, it's not color, I mean, but it's perfect if they get stuck. Um, the program itself is wonderful. So this was one that um, my son does do by himself in the morning, so this is, he starts his day with it. But to give you an idea of that, next up, I'm going to show you the Soaring with Spelling and Vocabulary. Um, kind of give you an idea like this is lesson one day one so you have that and they'll re kind of read that and then you flip it over and then they take a pretest on this side right here and you have lesson one day two so day one is basically the words the definitions and a little pretest day two day three so as you can see there's like one sheets day four and then day five they test again so day five is a test so, so far we like this. Um, it's not time consuming, you know, it doesn't take long. He does this one as by himself. So this is something he does do by himself, his choice. I'm always there though, in case he has any questions. And you know, and then you have your teacher book here. So it's got any answers or things like that for a quick, you know, check. So you don't have to really think about that. So there's that. Uh, writers in residence. Um, the inside of this book, this is my hefty book here, and I love this book. Um, I may try to get it broke down into smaller sections just so it's easier for him to handle. But to give you kind of a peek inside, because I am pretty sure that I could not be disappointed in this book. It is amazing. We have done some of it, like I said. It goes into it slowly it's not overwhelming we had fun with it I mean this is all the how to use part of it so you have all of this on how to use it 
you have your module action verb vigorous verbs this was so fun they got to work they got to act out these vigorous verbs and it was hilarious so they they write the stories and things like that um so this kind of gives you an idea you know it's wonderful i can't say enough about this i mean honestly it is our absolute favorite okay and a peek inside the easy grammar and like i said this is our first year using the easy grammar so we weren't really sure what to expect but so far we've been pretty pleased with it so this is kind of a look inside the book um this side's the teacher side this side's the student side i I do want to break this apart possibly and do his book by himself because I normally make copies but I think I'm going to break it in half and that way he can have his own. Now this I do with him. I, I know he could probably do it on his own but I choose to sit down and, and we talk about this. So that is the easy grammar. History, a uh, story of the world. I mean it's self-explanatory. It's amazing honestly. I love it. It's an easy read. I mean, he could read it by himself. Um, he always asked me to help him read it or to read it with him because some of the words are longer. And that's why I said I have debated getting the audio version so he could listen to the audio version. And then we can go and address the questions. And as I mentioned, I pulled my book out separate. So this is kind of what my side looks like. I have the activities. It lists, and I really love this on how to pronounce some of the words because some of the words are hard to pronounce. But to kind of give you an idea, like your chapter two, you have your review questions as you read it. So what we normally do is we'll read and we'll answer questions. We do this about, right now we're doing two days a week history, and then on Fridays we're doing activities. So there's an activity, Friday is our activity day for right now. So it's like we're going to do, like, we read it and answer questions. Same thing next day second day read ask questions you know it has additional history reading if they want to do that their map work which really helps them understand more of it so we really like that they have memorizations um the activities the medical records so there's that it was really neat you do that for a week and they take medical records of the whole family and things like that so this is that they have the timeline figures you know it's pretty easy pretty laid out self-explanatory and then his book Here's a kind of a peek inside it, but you know, here's like the outlines and things like that. You have your maps. I have not put it in order yet, but I'm going to put the maps in one section, the activities in a section, the timelines in a section, but just kind of give you a, an idea of what to expect in, in that book. Geography, the daily geography. Um, simplicity, uh, not time consuming. Monday through Friday is how we do it. You do one page a day. He can do it on his own. Usually I do it with him though. But like, for example, like this is the, you know, we'll read this. I'll read this to him. This is the answer key. And then, you know, you have the worksheets. So see how it's broke down. Like it even says Monday, you know, Tuesday, whoops, Thursday. Now, anyway, so that one's broke down separately, but usually it's Monday through Friday is how it's normally for the most part broken down. So there's that, and we really enjoyed it, as you can see right here, Monday through Friday, and I bet you I have pulled them out is why it was not there. But there's that, and next is the Apologia. And as I mentioned, love Apologia. Um, but, you know, here is like the insides you're going to learn in the apology. You're going to learn the um, botany, seeds, flowers, pollination, fruits, leaves, roots, stems, trees, um, gymnosperms, uh, seedless vascular plants, non-vascular, and you've got your nature journal. But, you know, it gives them a really close look. It does, like I mentioned, it does talk about the Latin, and that was really hard for him to understand in second grade, so we did put it up. You have your activities, which is neat, so there's that. And then you have your journal. Um, this one I was kind of tossing, you know, did I want to get the, the, the junior journal because he doesn't, he has a hard time writing sometimes, or did I want to get the regular journal, and I chose to get the regular one. And I think it's going to be great for him. Um, it's not a lot of detail. I love that you have your calendar here. Lesson one, you know, day one, two, lesson two. We're going to do this uh, two days a week. As you can see, week one, day one, day two. Read, do the activities in it. We're looking forward to that. 
So to kind of give you an idea, this is what it looks like. You know, you have your journaling part because it is a journal and you have your review questions and things like that that you cover. So this is an activity that's actually in the book. So we did this in the second grade as well. So we're going to redo this one because he doesn't remember it that much. And then there's this stuff. So looking forward to using it this year. A quick peek into the artistic pursuit. Um, I like the way it's laid out because as you open the book, let me go back. Um, it has your content. So it's got everything there that you're going to have. It has a list of your materials, and they're broken down into group one, group two, group three, so it's got it broken down. And as you go through the book, you're going to come across, like, this was really neat. You know, you talk about it, and then you ask the child, you know, different details that they see. But, like, where it's broken down into your craft list, this is the activity. And then you have that you're going to need the materials in group two. So, you know, to me, for organization, I kind of break these up into the groups, and then they're ready to go, so we can kind of pull it out and go with it, but that is how this is. We've done a few of these. We're looking forward to going completely with it this year. And peek at this. This book is wonderful. Like I said, you can see it's big. Um, it's got cool, it's just, we love it. The pictures in it, the illustrations, they're great. There's a peek into that. And like I said, I read this with the boys. So we do this kind of like a read aloud as our lesson. And then I verbally ask um, my first grader the questions and my fourth grader does some of the book. So you have your teacher guide. So obviously it's got the answers in it and things like that. And then this is the student guide. Can see that. And then as I mentioned, I did get the lesson plan schedule because I wanted to make sure I was breaking it up right. And we are going to do a little bit slower than what it recommended, but to give you an idea, this is how it's broken down. So it's kind of neat. You know, you can make it your own. You can mess around with it and do the layouts differently. It's all up to you on how you want to choose that. And a peek inside the music appreciation. Um, to kind of give you an idea on that. It's very user friendly. You have color pictures in it. It's great. Um, we really liked it so far when we did Mozart. Um, we've not done, this is Bach, so we've not done that. And this year we're going to start out with Bach. But as you can see, it's great. Um, once again, you, the workbook is intended for one student, and my first grader, he's really too young for most of the activities in here, so we're going to do, I'm verbally asking him the questions in this as well. And then to give you a peek at the book, like this is Mozart, so this is the one we actually have completed, but you have the music in the back. If your child plays the piano, they're going to love the music added in the back. Um, but then you have the story. So it's wrote out in basically a living book form so they can remember it and it tells the story.